I was sent the new and approved 12 terabyte massive arcade console build that has all the games from Pokemon, Mario, all the PlayStation games, PS1, PS2, PS3, uh, Sony, PSP. You also have all the Segas from Sega Genesis to Sega Saturn, and then all the Nintendos, all the Marios, all the Pokemons. It's pretty ridiculous. It's a little overwhelming, to be honest. Uh, this thing was well-received before, and this is the latest and greatest newer updated version of it. And I have to say, they definitely fixed some of their issues. So let's go ahead and jump into it, starting with the introduction video. Then we'll go through the menus, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. But this thing is packing. All right, here we go. So on first boot, um, there's so many games here, so much going on. So let me just start off, you know, watch the screen. I'm going alphabetically order between all the different consoles and games and things like that. But basically, this is a hard drive you purchase. It's coming out of China and they, you know, they've taken things that other people have made and kind of hodgepodged it together. But they're the ones selling it for ridiculously cheap and getting it on Amazon and the like so that's why it tends to be fairly popular now um it, a lot of people ask me in the comments you know can i just put the plug this into my tv no you have to plug this into a computer of some kind it runs on off of windows it's just an external hard drive you plug it into your computer um, and then now they're selling it with a controller and this controller is pretty cool the game controller i think it's going to help a lot of people out who are newbies to make it even more plug and play because the controller is just going to hook right up but uh, as you see here we're going to um starting the systems and consoles out in atari you had angry bird games for your windows pc and so this this system does this this hard drive has everything from Atari all the way up to Nintendo Switch as far as consoles. It's gonna have all your handheld consoles as well, your Game Boys, things like that, even your PSP. And then it does have some Windows games, some MS DOS games, um, and everything in between. So if you're into gaming, this has it all for that from that generation, from like the 1980s all the way up to like tw even 2020. Some of the Nintendo Switch games. Um, it does not have the new Zelda game on it, though, from what I saw. But um, I, this, uh, I should let you know right up front that I've been told that this is a newer, this is like a kind of the first version of it. They're actually still making fixes on this. And um, so uh, I'll talk about that towards the end of the video as far as, you know, how polished this thing is or any issues I found. Now, um, here we go. Just going through some stuff. You got like, things like bootleg here. These are those like all-in-one carts where you know you can get for your consoles. People actually buy the physical ones, but they have them here. Um, you'll notice a lot of collections, like Bust a Move. So Bust a Move was a game franchise. They made it for a lot of different systems, um, but uh, they have collections, and so that'll that'll pull in all the Bust a Moves, everything from the N64 version to the arcade version. Um, and then you have all these Capcom systems. Um, that's something I haven't mentioned yet. There's arcade systems on here as well. So a lot of people like this build because of that reason. Like these are games you would have to go to arcade to play or you have to emulate them, right? There's You have no choice. You cannot buy those games. Now, some of these franchises have released things like Neo Geo released their, you know, their Neo Geo gamepad, which has some games pre-installed or a little mini arcade. But they're very limited and you don't get the full collection of games. So this is going to give you everything. Um, yes, it has it has killer instinct i don't think it has the right rom but it has it on there a lot of people ask about that but it has like all the mortal combats you know it's going to have you know michael jackson's moonwalker it's going to have uh dinosaurs and cadillacs or cadillacs and dinosaurs and it's also going to have like the punisher and alien vs predator so all the arcade games are going to be on there including like uh, marvel vs capcom and all the fighting games all the neo geo games um even 
techno pair. Now here's one right here. You have you know Daphne and Space Ace again, a system where it played better you know in the arcade, and you can actually get them here. And so um, yes, this is this is kind of overwhelming. This menu system I'm showing you here now, but it has it all. Um, you can you could customize this and remove some of the collections and things. But uh, here I just spent some time in the Doom collection. I'm just blown away by how many Doom titles there are. You know, and this is just one franchise. So, some bigger franchises like Pokemon, Mario, um, Metal Gear Solid, Contra. You know, it's going to have Donkey Kong. It's going to have all those games. Zelda. You know, it's gonna, so it's going to have all the Zeldas from NES all the way up to... It goes up to, like, I want to say... Uh, there's not the Nintendo Switch one. They they do have Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I'd say so. It goes up to Breath of the Wild, and um, so it's it's just massive. If you would you know, as the comments say in this video, in these videos, you would you would have paralysis. You would just be so overwhelmed with how many choices you have. You'd spend more time in the menu system than you would actually playing the games, and uh, that's possible. But it's up to you. It's in your control. I will be playing some games towards the end of this video. But I just wanted to keep this in alphabetical order and kind of in the right, you know, as I go down it chronologically. That way, a lot of people ask questions like, what games are on it? Where's which what? So this gives me the opportunity to, um, you know, you can move around the video and know where I'm going as far as alphabetically. So if you want to get down to Z, you can fast forward. Now, something you might have noticed on the screen in front of you is there's some duplicate titles. Like, you'll see the game twice, um, especially in these arcade sets. Now, right now, you're not seeing it. This is a pinball. There's lots of pinball games as well, if you like pinball. Pinball FX2, FX3, and then uh, what we're in right now, which is future pinball. And then there's pinball games for different consoles as well. But uh, back to the duplicates thing. Some of them are, in fact, duplicates, and they need to delete those or figure out a way to hide them. It's not a huge deal. It's, you know not a big deal and then these question marks as well they're still fixing some of the artwork is what i've been told but see that's one question mark amongst many as far as the duplicates go sometimes especially in the arcade games there was different roms made different versions of the game if you will and so um, some of those are just different versions of the game uh, but i might as well say this now but i'll say it at the end as well is you know this is not perfect you will find, you know, oh, how come this Mario Kart game isn't in the Mario Kart collection, but it's in the Mario Kart N64, you know? Um, it's actually, it is in the correct Mario Kart, I did check that, but uh, that's just an example of, you know, or Mega Man, right? Like, oh, it didn't have Mega Man 2 in the Mega Man collection, but if you go over to Nintendo, you can find it there. You know, things like that, um, but those are rare. It's, it's, it's still really, really well thought out and thorough. As far as that goes, so Zelda's. Look at all the Zeldas. And some of these are. Remember, they made the same Zelda games for different systems, right? So there were Zelda games made for the portable, the same Zelda game for the portable Nintendo console at the time, and then the the home console at the time. And even like Breath of the Wild, it was made for the Nintendo Wii U, and it was also made for the Switch. So here's your Killer Instincts. Uh, it has Killer Instinct one and two, but. When I actually clicked into them, one went into like the SNES version, not the actual arcade version. But um, now, as far as adding games, if you wanted to go download, you can easily get, uh, you can go on Google and just search, you know, Killer Instinct arcade version. Um, the thing with the Killer Instinct arcade is it's a two file game, so make sure you get both files. And then uh, you can drag and drop them in the correct emulator folder, and then you can play them that way. So you can see the arcade games are split up since there's so many games. Another thing you'll start, you'll see me doing later in this video is there'll be a letter that shows up in the middle of your screen. And that's me hitting the triggers, the top buttons on the controller, which allow you to jump letters within these systems and collections. And so that, so for example, we just saw MAME has like, like two player games, four player games, 1970s MAME games, 1980s MAME games. You can... Uh, sort through them either by clicking on the right collection you want or you can hit those trigger buttons while you're in the collection to really jump down to where you need to be. So here's another example of just a lot of different versions of that ROM. And so you're going to primarily see that in the arcade and Final Burn Alpha. But there you can see I started jumping by letters just in that last one. So Mario Kart, great series of games. So many to choose from. 
Um, that is something they have on here if you just passed it, is they do have like the European releases as well as, you know, here I am, you know, I'm North America, so, you know, I'm used to that. But um, there is going to be some Japanese, some South America, some European, some different titles and different ROMs from the different eras or from those different geographic locations where they release there. So, um, you might see them as duplicates. Some of them are also different files. Um, but yeah, look at that. So many <laughs> so many different versions to choose from. And like I said, that's mostly going to be in the arcade-based systems. Um, so MS-DOS even, you know, like these old MS-DOS games that you see need like a Windows 95 PC or, or DOS, running DOS. Um, here's a Might Magic 3. What a great game. Spent many hours on that game. So as I'm scrolling through here, just so much nostalgia. Um, you know, at this point in the video, I just started hitting the, the trigger button. I realized, you know, there's just way more for me to go <laughs> so much. So you'll notice I'll start going a little faster through these collections. But um, where I stop, typically, you know, I feel like most people buying this build are going to be buying it because, you know, especially with Xbox, Dreamcast, and above, like Xbox 360, Dream, um, GameCube, uh, Wii, Wii U, those, those games are much larger games. PlayStation 2, for example. And so a lot of people are buying this just for the ROM, just to have those games, backing up those games for themselves and having them. Um, and there's a couple good reasons for this. One is you have a bad bandwidth or your internet's slow. Two, you just might not know how to do it. Um, three, you might be a collector and you don't want these discs to get scratched. So you'd rather have the disc, you know, and keep that in pristine condition. Uh, because over uses, ejecting it, moving it around, sticky fingers, whatever else, you know. Um, so having this this way, you're able to play the games and do it just fine. And, and, you know, keep those collectibles just fine. The other thing being is some of those collectibles, some of these systems are just ridiculously expensive now. Things like um, Sega Saturn, certain Sega Saturn games, certain uh, GameCube games. It's just ridiculous how crazy the secondary market is and the collector's market is. Um, and the other thing that a lot of people like to do with these emulators is you can save the game. You can save the game on the screen you're on. You don't have to go find a save point. You know, there's certain games that are really annoying that way. And so you might call it cheating, but a lot of people like to save their state or rewind and replay certain levels or get through a game. And so, um, you know, this gives you that option uh, as well to do. There's save states. There's, you know, adding multiple players. Also, the ability to change your controller. Remember, this is a third-party, you know, emulator. So many times they'll, um, you know, allow multiple controllers. So, for example, some of my favorite controllers are the Wii U Pro controller. You can absolutely Bluetooth that into your computer and use that. This thing now is coming with the GameSir controller. Um, let me get back on that while we're going through the games. I'll get back on, on that controller, give you my thoughts on that. Um, but the Xbox 360 controller is super popular, super easy, USB. But 8-Bit uh, Doe. 8-Bit Doe makes the um, Pro 2 controller now. They make like the PlayStation style controller. Um, so depending on what you like, you like the Xbox 360 style controller, you like the um, you know more PlayStation style controller, it's, uh, it'll do all that. Um, you can even you know pair your Wii remote or some other things to your system as well. Um, like when it comes to light guns, for example, yes, you can hook up a light gun and play these light gun games. There's a couple different solutions, the Sinden light gun, the Mayflash light bar. And uh, I have videos of that on my YouTube channel here if you want to learn more about how to get that working on your computer. Um, so here we are in, uh, so now back to, uh, I'll, t I'll say one more thing about the controllers, but we're in Dream, or not Dreamcast, but GameCube now. And as you can see, um, this is a collection I like because again, super expensive. Some of these games are so expensive and there are some really cool games uh, for the GameCube. And so it allows you to play those. Um, so you can see here, lots of Nintendo games. The Nintendo Switch, yes, the Nintendo Switch will run. Uh, that's the other thing a lot of people ask is, will it run on my slow computer? Probably not. Probably not. You definitely need a dedicated graphics card. You need like an i5 Intel processor within the last maybe five generations or so. But if you spent $500 or more on your laptop, you know, it might work. So think about that, like $500 and above. That's the kind of uh, price you should be paying for the performance you should be getting. Um, I'm running this on a much higher end laptop so I can run everything on here. PlayStation 3, you know, I have a GTX 3060. Uh, um, and so it runs it just fine and a 12th gen processor. 
Um, back to the controller, the Game Store controller that comes with it. Um, so far, so good. It seems like they uh, it comes with a dongle, so it's super easy to pair, and it just works. So I might recommend getting the controller if you don't feel confident playing around uh, with controllers. Um, while I was in Nintendo Switch, I brought up the thing of compatibility and will this work on my computer? And so, yes, $500 computer or better, ideally. You can run the, but it, let's say you have like a cheap $100 or $200 laptop. This will still run on there. And you can still play Nintendo, Super Nintendo, most of the 8, 16, maybe 32-bit games. But when it comes to the Xbox or Wii U or even above that, um, you know, you'd probably struggle. I'd say you could play everything up to Dreamcast and maybe Sega Saturn. You know, right around there is where you're going to run into some issues if you have a slower computer. Uh, the other thing is you could use this in an arcade cabinet or something like that. It would work just fine. So PC games, right? So again, these PC games, like, for example, some of these higher-end ones, uh, you probably would need a dedicate. You would need a dedicated graphics card. And depending on how good that graphics card was, some of these games will run uh, better. So while we're um, going through this, let me bring up, you know, the, the number one comment I get is, you know, this is just all um, viruses and there's key loggers on here and everything else. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to argue, you know, you can and cannot purchase this item. It's, it's in your control. And uh, if you're really nervous about it, you can disable or remove any kind of graphics cards or any kind of communication devices within your computer and use it on like a secondary computer. Um, you know, because for example, this is my, you know, I typically game on a different computer than I work on professionally. So separating those out, um, you know, I didn't even know they made a full throttle remastered. I used to love that game and there's a remastered version. That's on my to-do list to check out. But um, what I was saying with the viruses is um, if you're at all worried, just don't buy it, right? Just pass and, and build this yourself. Um, you can absolutely make this yourself. All these emulators and all these things are ROMs. They're all available to you for free online. There's a lot of people archiving them, especially considering some of these games in the next 10 or 20 years, you might not even be able to buy them, even in the secondary market, you know, uh, over time. So preservation, you know, is a good thing. And um, back to this, though, is you could build this yourself. You don't, if you don't need all this stuff, if you just want to play a few games, you know, support the developers. You know, Retro Arch is out there. You know, um, Retro Bat. You can run Launchbox. There's all kinds of front ends that will help you with the software end of things. And then the emulators themselves. Like I said, Retro Arch has a lot of emulators built into it. But PPSSPP for PSP or Dolphin for the higher end Nintendo systems. You know, these all exist uh, in the wild without any kind of paywall in front of them. So you can absolutely do that yourself, you know, and it's actually a great route to go. I highly recommend it. Um, but here we are on this build here. You can see there's a couple artworks missing there, but other than that, um, Sega Model 2, Sega Model 3, Naomi, Naomi 2. So, you know, some of these games were console based and some of these games were in the arcade. So um, it's cool to have like Initial D, you know, Initial D, you can spend a lot of quarters on that game or you can play it for free on your computer. Um, and isn't this just ridiculous? At this point in the video, I'm just like blown away like I said, choice paralysis, like paralyzed by how many choices you actually have. Um, but, uh, you know, there it is. You know, it's uh, it's all there. So when it comes to like Ring Wide and Ridge Edge and um, Techno Parrot, you know, these are these arcade based uh, systems. These emulators are a lot harder to use. Um, just so you know, from my experience, you tend to have to turn off your firewall for these games a lot of people are gonna say like oh you're just saying that so i get a virus whatever again just don't play this on a computer that you that you use regularly that'll avoid all this argumentation and everything but um that's been my experience but uh these are these, these tend to be a lot harder to set up like i've set up a lot of emulators you know it's so easy to just play nintendo games but when it comes to like um, the techno parrot and things like that it gets really complicated with the controls and getting it to boot correctly and all the different versions of the emulator. Uh, you know, I've done it enough that I feel fairly comfortable with it, but it was definitely really intimidating the first time I did it. Uh, so, you know, that's something I always appreciate is just how much time <laughs> is saved with uh, something like this that's set up for you. 
So now we're getting into Sony PlayStation. Um, again, I want to point out what's cool about this is it not only has the North American titles, but here you have, you have PlayStation Japan, for example. So I'm skipping over a lot of collections now because it's just so ridiculous. Like, you know, PlayStation Japan's really niche. PSP minis are really niche. You know, you guys know those. Or if you don't, just Google it. They're little mini games for the PSP. But I know a lot of you want to know what's on the PlayStation 2. So I'm spending more time with that. And again, I'm just jumping down letters. You'll see the letter in the middle of the screen. And then see the games that are included. And, uh, I mean, these work. Uh, you'll see later. I play PlayStation 2. I play PlayStation 1. I play MAME. I play all the systems. They all work. Just find out of the box. Um, if you do have issues, you might have a driver issue, uh, or you might have, you might just want to reload the system. So, because sometimes you're, for example, the first time you play PS2 or PS3, this is the first time you're loading that emulator on this particular device that you're playing it on. And so it might be pre-installing some things or just loading the settings. And so the first time it might crash or just not might load correctly, I recommend just quitting and then re-entering the game one more time. That happened to me a couple of times, and I got the game working right after that. It just started working right after that, so I had no issues whatsoever. So give that a, a, a chance. So now we're getting into the weird PS4, PS5. So yeah, there's no actual emulator for those consoles yet, from my knowledge. What they're basically doing is they're running like the, um, the PC uh, version of those games equivalent. So like Cuphead, they're running like Cuphead PC version, not the PS5 version. Um, uh, nonetheless, it looks cool, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, don't buy it thinking you're actually getting PS4, PS5. And maybe that'll make PlayStation happier. Um, now, uh, PSP, you know, another system which just some of those games are, have you checked out prices on eBay recently on this? Some of those games are ridiculous. Um, you know, so I went through the PSP games to show you, you know, it has the majority of them. They run. The PP SSPP emulator, when you run those, is pretty cool. You can do a lot of like um, changing of the resolution. You can do play HD games. You can really bump up the resolution, bump up the frames. It's pretty cool. So we're getting to the end of the collections now. The next thing, I'm going to be opening the hard drive and showing what's in the hard drive and then talking about the file system itself and kind of more of the technical stuff. And then we're going to jump over to actually like some gameplay and my final thoughts on this build. But what you just saw was pretty much every single game from Atari all the way up to Nintendo Switch. Pretty ridiculous. Um, I don't even know how many games. I don't even know how many. Si this has got to be close to 100 systems, maybe more. And it's got to be 50, like, I don't know, 100,000 games or more. Uh, now, obviously, you're only going to play like 5% of them. But um, more than likely, it's going to cover that, that 5%. So, um, pretty ridiculous. Pretty ridiculous what's on here. So, right now, um, oh, okay. And then you have settings, controls, and credits. So, if you want to change your settings, change the controls. The controls, you can't change them there. You just see what the controls are. And then here's their credits. And then here's their Facebook page. Because a lot of people think I'm making this build or whatever. There's their stuff. It's Ken Hank. Go check them out there. Go talk to them. It's their product, not mine. All right, let's get into the hard drive. Back again was sent the 12 terabyte drive. You could just slide off the cover here. The U green hard drive enclosure is really nice. I really dig it. It's got the LEDs, it's got the power, you got the USB connector, and then you're still rocking these Exos Enterprise drives. Um, it doesn't say it's uh, they're remanufactured and uh, they're decent drives. What I did notice though is it's kind of loose in here, so you want to make sure you push it up. Make sure you push that up and then put on the on the thing because if you move it around a lot it could it could you know if you push down like that you see i just loosened it right so make sure it put in there all the way and then slide on the drive and then you're good to go um they sent it to me with this game sir t3 controller not sure if they're going to start bundling that but all i got to say is these controllers are pretty sick so I've always liked GameStar controllers. They have great battery life, great pairing ability, and just overall great feel. So the fact that they included that is pretty cool. Now that's a controller right there. Really nice, feels so good. I've reviewed many um, GameStar controllers in the past. They're always great, super solid. Um, I put them up there, and they even, they even have a little dongle, a little indicator, and then a charging cable. That's a little surprising. They went with USB type. They didn't go USB type C on the charger. That kind of sucks. But I can feel by the weight that they definitely have um, 
400 milliamp battery, 2.4 G, three levels of vibration. I was gonna say, they're pretty heavy, so there's definitely vibration motors in, in, the, in the handles there. Cool, let's check it out. All right, so I do like that controller. I, I thought it was cool. Nice little atom, especially if it's cheap. There you go. It's about 11, 10.9 terabytes of space here. Here's the file system. It's just two folders to start with. And then as you see there, I clicked in one. They have a backup configuration file in case you break something. Um, they have, uh, so these are more like advanced fixes and things, but there are some, um, some drivers and things that can help. Um, uh, this is actually the information area. I just opened up one for you. It's not, it's a little helpful. This is more of like the raw, if the system is not working that'll help you work better. Um, like, but it's not actually teaching you how to change controls or how to save your state. So it's more just for like, if a particular system isn't loading, you might wanna go over to this file area and check it out. And it'll give you like some information on what you might need to change. So, you know, just clicked on a few so you can see what kind of information they have there. Um, now those top three folders though, are drivers that you might need to install if things aren't working like the Microsoft framework. So this is in a track mode as well, or in the, in the, yeah, in the track mode, the hyperspin as well, those files, but you can access them, uh, you know, through the file system here. And then here you have two folders. If you're watching zoom in, you got the emulation folder and then the collections folder. So the emulator folders gives you all like the emulators and you can change out the different, um, emulator settings like controls and resolution things like that you can change it from OpenGL to Vulkan or whatever you want to do and then also I'm showing you here that you can access the ROMs from here a lot of people are like can I just get this build and grab the ROMs off or transfer the ROMs or do whatever yeah I mean it's all there for you you know you could just copy and paste you could add more you can remove some it's all there in the um, in the file structure here so in case you're curious, those are probably the two areas you're going to spend the most time. Uh, again, the emulator settings, it's going to be very helpful for you there to change controls, add a second player, third player, fourth player, remove rumbling, uh, change the configuration of the controls, uh, change the resolution, things like that. To launch the program, you just click into arcade and then launch the application. And then you might have to change your drive letter. Remember, this has to be your D drive. So in order to do that, just type disk management in your search bar, go to disk management, find the hard drive, right click it and change the drive letter to D. So I am planning on making another video where I get this hard drive and I just put it on a freshly formatted computer, something really cheap and uh, you know something you buy on like Craigslist or something and then just start from beginning to start, get it to boot and just show it playing, right? So really easy from purchasing to buying, I'll work on that. So here you go, you got a main game here. Uh, you know, it's running just fine, um, tons of fun using the controller that they included in there. No lag, it's working really good. You can save your state. You can do all kinds of things with it. Um, so let's just keep watching. I'm gonna play some N64 and then some uh, more advanced systems as we go. Some PlayStation 2, uh, PlayStation 3 at the end. Okay, uh, also uh, GameCube as well. So final thoughts, you know, the last one, I was like, you know, you can't beat the price to, to what you're actually getting here. There are way better builds out there. Um, if you're in, the, first of all, you know, don't buy it. If you can build it, go build it. This is a better thing to do. But then there's always going to be the people that just want to buy. Okay, for those people that just want to buy, right? There's so many places you can go. You can go on eBay, you can go on Amazon, you can go on Etsy. You can find some like random gaming group and go in there and try to talk to somebody and see if they can sell you something. Uh, but a lot of that stuff is a little sketchier. The reason why this one's so popular, I think, is because it's through Amazon, right? And so you have the Amazon return policy at the end of the day. The other big advantage being the price. Like this, for the hard drive and everything, you're getting a 12 terabyte hard drive, you're getting the, um, the case. Um, I haven't seen how they're gonna be bundling this with the controller or not, but the hard drive alone, they were charging 300, so they might charge a little extra for the controllers. But um, that's just ridiculously cheap for what you're getting and um, yeah. So it has a lot of advantages in that this is a pr all pretty much plug and play uh, car drive and it's, it's a ridiculously affordable price and it's just a ridiculously thorough full hard drive, right? So for all those reasons, it's intriguing, it's interesting and you know, that that's what's going for it. All right, now everyone's like, what are the cons? Okay, 
Yes, I want to address that. I do think that there's a con that, you know, potentially, you know, you don't know where this hard drive is coming from. So handle it with care. Don't just recklessly do things with it, right? If you feel like you're not that tech savvy and this intimidates you, then move along. You know, it might not be for you. Um, the other thing being is, you know, this, I've, I've, my understanding is that they're fixing this, but there is, um, you know, some games that are broken, you know, some question marks, things like that, some duplicates, but, um, that's not, that's not breaking this thing at all. It's just slightly annoying and it's just in the visuals. It's not a, it's not a big deal at all. So, um, from this version, as far as like this version versus the last version I reviewed a, a little over a couple months, a month ago, two months ago or so, three months maybe, um, you know, this one is definitely easier to use. It has a le lot less going on. They cleaned up the file structure. They cleaned up the games. You know, things are, things that were broken before are now working. So it is getting better and better from that regard. And so I got to give them props uh, for that. But that is a con, you know, for a lot of people or the, you know, question marks, things like that. Um, another thing that I'm just going to say is I'm not a fan of rocket launcher and a track mode and all this stuff. Like it's a little too bells and whistles for me. It's a little bit too, too much, um, you know, too many LEDs, too many blinking lights, too many, you know, if you're, if you're susceptible to seizures, be careful. Um, but that's just a personal preference of mine. I have to say, if I was to show this to somebody who's never seen it before, conversely, they would be like blown away. They'd be like, oh my God, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, 1942, the bombs. You know, they'd be so stoked and so nostalgic from everything that was on here. So while that's a personal you know, taste of mine, you know, I bring that up. The other thing that I mentioned about Launchbox or, or not Launchbox, sorry, Rocket Launcher, not Launchbox, is that, um, you know, it is a little more cumbersome if you are going to make changes to it. I think... From what I've seen, Ken Hank does not want you messing with this. They want you to just plug and play it and enjoy it and tell your friends and sell more hard drives. I think that's what they're in the business for. And so they don't want you editing things and adding things and duplicating things. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, you can do that, but it is going to be a little bit more for advanced people. And you can break this thing, right? By modifying files, you don't know what you're modifying, things like that. You can easily break this thing. So, um, you know, if you're just know that that's another, you know, thing about this, that the ease of modification, right? It definitely works. So don't get me wrong. Like you can plug and play, it'll work just fine. But for those more advanced users and people want to change things, you know, you might be better off building your own or starting from scratch. So you can really kind of learn as you go. There's hundreds of hours put into this. Speaking of hundreds of hours, I'd want to thank all the people that I know work on the actual emulators and the front ends and things, everything from RetroArch to PPSSPP to um, LaunchBox, CoinOps, RetroFE, you know, uh, Emulation Station, all that stuff. Um, they, those are the real heroes. Think about buying them a copy. Go to those websites. There's usually a donation link, something like that. Hook them up. They are the ones that are the real heroes. Um, so that's what that's the end emulation my final thoughts on emulation as you see not a single hiccup everything's full res everything just works controls the, everything um if you are on a 4k display i might recommend downgrading it to 1080p um for some of the older systems because i think when they set all these things up they defaulted to that resolution so um you can always change it you know you can keep it on 4k when you're playing like ps4 ps3 but uh, the resolutions sometimes cause issues, uh, so you should know that. But other than that, as far as emulation, it just works, right, out of the box. So this is the new uh, revised 12 terabyte Ken Hank uh, Hyperspin build. And uh, if you have the old one, should you buy the new one? Not necessarily. There's not a huge, huge difference. But if you are going to be buying one for the first time, you know, obviously you will probably want to go with the new one over the old one as it has more bells and whistles and fixes and things like that. I'm sure they'll discontinue the other one eventually. I'm not, you know, I would imagine. But whatever the case may be, if you want to see that video, I have it posted um, and you can see the differences. So anyways, that's it from me. That's what I think. Let me know what you all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one. Too.